that was major successful when white was on like it is now it would uh, flash around and my video card would crash and i've been running it for like half an hour now my video card is completely fine this is what you see in the television is from the computer and as you can see while it's idle it's just fading around in colors which is really dope because it gives like this fear and it's not like boring and a one color stuck till there's music so it's fading around fading around and if i would enable music and the audio is coming two times from the television left and right the subwoofer and in the back at my bench you can hear there's music too so i have four speakers and one subwoofer and now the led mod is looking so much better that combined with all the other things I've done makes for a very clean look. I will eventually make a video explaining the setup and stuff, but this is pretty dope because now if I disable the, the television, the LEDs will go off, and if I enable it back, the LEDs go on, they will flash around, which is normal, and then it will change to color fan change. It changed now the color changing and my Xbox is making some odd noises. I'm not sure what that's about but my Xbox is making some very odd noises. The disc is like stuck. That's odd. Alright, no, that, that was odd. But uh, yeah. So uh, this is, and also what I notice is that the colors are much brighter. The, as you can see, like my, almost the whole wall is light up now. It looks worse in video, but if you can see on the top, you can see that my TV is not aligned yet because the line is not straight. But this is so much more powerful as well. So I really think that uh, the amp on the 12 volts, two amp was not enough. And now it's feeding the power straight from the television. So it's an internal mod now. There's only one wire going down to the subwoofer to light that up too. And I just see that my subwoofer and television aren't aligned either, so I'm gonna have to move that around back. But yeah, the sound reactive, uh, this reactive mod on this television is now much better. I've been doing this for years, and I've been having this mod since 2012, but I always had external power. And now finally, I have the full power. It's really um, looking much better. This is something you can't show in videos because it's in real life very different with, with the LEDs. And what I also think is really cool if I take the remote out because I can still control this with this remote, but this, you can see it right now, if, if it's blue, my graphics card lights up. So that's really dope. The graphics card is really lighting up because the green reacts to the blue and that's pretty dope. So uh, if I put it on red, the graphic card actually turns completely black, which is also very dope. Green, of course, is just going to be green and white. Finally works. This would make the graphics card crash. So I'm going to keep it on white for like an hour and see if my graphic cards run into any issues. But I think this solved it because the flashing around is also gone on white. So I think uh, that had to do with something with power draw and that the graphics card would get interference from that from the wall socket or something. I have no clue but it should be fixed now. So yeah, thanks for watching. That was the upgrade, the dumb and crazy upgrade on my television. I, I would really say don't try this at home because I have no clue what I'm feeding the 12 volts from, but it works, I'm good. So if the television breaks one day, it would break anyway. It's already five years old, even more. It's six years old, I think. So, and it's still working really good. It's just a cheap ass, I paid like 350 euros in 2011 and 2011 for it and it's 1080p and it has four HDMI and stuff and it's a Samsung it's really good so and I'm gonna quickly show from the back side you can see the LEDs around and the controller there and my cables which you can see a lot of cables but actually if you look from here I've done the cable management really good you can see in the middle now these wires these are because I haven't finished it up. I will zip tie them up and that cable there will be removed and it's really clean. So yeah, this video is not for the average person. I'm gonna say that straight up from the beginning. Uh, this is probably one of the dumbest things I've done 
and unfortunately it works. So uh, what I did, what you see laying on the ground, it's my 37 inch Samsung television. And uh, maybe you have seen it in other videos, but I actually manually LED modded it. So it has LED strips going all the way around. And this is not something hard. It's That's pretty doable for everybody. You just have to solder it carefully, make sure nothing shorts out, nothing touches the metal of the TV because this is metal. So you make a circle around the television. And as you can see the corners, I did like cables around and stuff and I hot glued it on. And I got a pretty expensive infrared music controller. The reason it's expensive is because if you have a shitty controller with a shitty ass microphone, if you have a television on volume 5, then it's going to react. If you go above that, it will not pick up any sound. So this one was 70 decibels and even this thing had issues with my decent volume. So I put some foam in there, as you can see, I loaded up with foam and this has been working for years. I've had this set up since 2012. The thing is, I always had an external power source. Now, I have my subwoofer under there and I let modded that one as well. It hooks up to the same controller. This one is for the television, this one goes to the subwoofer. And I had the white color would flash. And that probably had to do with the amount of LEDs I have around, pulling too much power because I was running two, 12 volts, 2 amps. The thing is, my external video card, which is behind that laptop, would react to that, and that's very odd. It might have to do with the Dutch power grid, that it's not uh, grounded properly, but the flashing of the white color on my LEDs would disable my video card, and it would only appear on white color. So if I would have the rainbow color on LED for music, that it flashed color, after a while, if it would hit the white colors, my video card would crash. And this is something very odd. Since then, I've run it on the green color, and that one was fine. So what I thought was, if I maybe switch out the power supply to something that doesn't flash, then maybe it works. And then I started to think, but I don't have anything that is 12 volts above 2 amps. And then I got this stupid, stupid, stupid idea and it's actually working. I've tested it and it's actually working. What you see right here is the inside of my television and um, this one is also modified. So what I did was, these cables are not supposed to be here. I taped them down now so it doesn't short, but um, these are both hooked up to each of one of the speakers. The reason I do that is because when it's on the, tele uh, on the table, I use my television left and right sound as center the subwoofer for bass, and on the other side of the benches, there are two more speakers which do the backside noises. It's not real surround, but it's still dope because the speakers in the back are have a little more height. So I have a subwoofer, uh, middle tones, and high tones. The middle tones coming from the television itself. So that's still quite immersive, especially if I'm walking in the room or if I'm laying on the back here and watching a movie, I have my sound from the back, which increases volume of the speech because those are high um, high tone speakers so I can hear in the back when I'm watching movies or series I can hear the voices very clear so that's why I run uh, the left and right out of my television I've made a hole in here which looks terrible but there I feed the cables through to my subwoofer my subwoofer is in and out and from there I run it through the side of the room to the back to both speakers which are actually behind the seat so that's pretty cool all right Back to this. So what I did was, it was really stupid. I don't recommend doing this. I'm not a perfectly graduated engineerical um, professor or whatever. So what I did was, I took my done ass with a cheap ass multimeter and I looked at it logically. I looked at the symbols and what it says and I found 12 volts and I didn't want to put my multimeter on 220 so I was really reading it out and uh, if you don't have studied this thing it looks like hieroglyphs but I figured it all out and actually I found that this point I'm not gonna can read this thing it's it's plus and minus 12 volts and I hooked up my LEDs to it and it was not flashing which means it probably su supplies more than 12 volts 3 amps and um, at the moment I have disabled the cable because I'm gonna solder but I tested it with the cable to my Xbox over there, which I don't even use, but I tested it out. The television is fully functional with that. I'm still leeching 12 volts, couple amps off something, but I was thinking since this, um, this is probably a boost converter and since it's powering down 220 volts to like 
7, because this is 7 volts to the board here, which runs probably on 7. This 12 board is probably for the LED lighting, for the because it's LED backlit, so I'm not really losing anything by leeching off that, because I think those have much more power than they need in amps, so I'm not thinking, and even if I would lose some brightness, I wouldn't really care, but I would see that, because if I would disable the LEDs, it should go up and down. So I'll test that, but for now I'm gonna try to hook it up so I can actually test that. But I'm leeching these, the LEDs that's gonna be in the back of my television, I'm leeching that straight off the television, meaning I only have to use the power cable to get my television and the LEDs running, which is pretty dope in itself, meaning the LEDs would also power on when the television is powered on. I have a remote that can do that. It can turn on whatever I want with one button, but that would take that away and just make the LEDs really part of the television, which is which is pretty cool. And if it would solve the graphic card crashing issue, that would be really nice. So I'm gonna reassemble this and solder that there and show how it goes. So this is something, an idea, a reference. You can do that if you have the knowledge, but this is not a tutorial on how to LED much a television. I really don't recommend doing that because a television is really expensive. And um, if you break something, it's gonna be bad because this is, I, I'm not really to buy it because this television is from 2012 and it has survived anything I did with it, like all the other stuff. And yeah, it, even this seems to be a success. So I leech sound and power off this television and get like five speakers, so four speakers and a subwoofer running off this one television, including LED monitor backside, which reacts to the music. So that's pretty dope. This is just a monitor for me. I don't use the television function. It's a monitor for my laptop. So I need to have the graphics card running because the graphics card is actually outputting to the television. So uh, yeah, let's build this back together. And also, this is the base of the television and I LED modded that too. So actually this glass here is inside there are LEDs too. As you can see, there's going LEDs in there. And I have a LED strip in the bottom there which lights up the underside of the television, but I'm not gonna use that because I have used it for a couple of weeks and I didn't really like it. So I'm gonna just keep the LEDs glowing around the television like a hue on the wall there, that's pretty dope. And yeah, let's build this back together. I have to hot glue this back, but um, what I've done is I have my cable coming out of the television for the right speaker, the left speaker, and 12 volt power, which goes into the control board. So there's the infrared going to a sleeve cable going here, which hangs on the bottom of the television so I can control the LED colors and stuff. And uh, pretty much the TV is back together. So you can see the LEDs are going around. And if I turn on the television now, the power goes on for the left controller. So that's pretty dope. So if I enable the TV, it should enable the LEDs as well. So yeah, so all I have to do is control that it goes to the music mode and stuff, but that won't be a problem. So I'm gonna hot glue this back and I've already tested everything. It's working and it should be good. Um, I have not tested yet how the LEDs perform with the television LEDs plus the subwoofer LEDs, but I'm not, I had issues even without the subwoofer LEDs and I don't have that now. So I'm pretty confident that that is solved as well. I'm confident the power is enough, so, but we will see. It still will be better than previously, so 